Guys, what is going on with Cairo level four in Warpath? I don't know what Lilith was thinking, but I have to give them the benefit of the doubt that they had something unique in mind with the gameplay experience and how they designed Cairo as a map. Because in terms of Warpath, it is far from that, at least for the first week to two weeks that we've been in the level four event. We've actually been in for eight days, I believe, um, but for the first week to two weeks, you're not really going to do hardly any fighting at all uh, unless you're lucky enough to be next to an alliance uh, that does put up a fight, but there's some problems with that, and I'll show you. The first issue with Cairo is actually how they've done the matchmaking, and I've noticed this across the board in all battlefields so far. What they seem to be doing is there's a large disparity in the power between alliances. I've not really particularly seen this as much in Moscow and San Francisco, but in Cairo, the power disparity is alarming. So my alliance, United Power on server 26, is 12.6 billion. We have about 147 members, active members. We are paired with our friend's boss from server 26, 9 billion power, 112 members. So our two alliances combined are... 21 billion power and some change, over 250 members, uh, active members, so we're a pretty good fighting force and we will probably dominate the battlefield. We're actually going to do a 2v6 to make it as fair and as fun as possible because if you look at the pairings here, we have mass at 7 billion but with only 80 people, so maybe that's a pretty active alliance. So far from what I can tell, they have about 20 to 30 fighting players we have xyjt at 2.55 billion um, this alliance is actually from server 2 so they're a much older server and they only have 82 members and look at that they're a level 2 farm chest we have Dut walking dead 5 billion gck 7.28 billion knw 3.43 billion and NTDA 2.28 billion, 52 people. And even within those alliances, actually, of that 52 people, if we go look at their member list, look how many alt accounts they have. They have at least probably 15 to 20 alt accounts in this alliance. So they really have like 30 people, and of that 30 people, they have like really a handful of people that we fought. NTDA is actually the alliance that we have access to fight. And they did put up a little bit of fight. They had, a, they had not really a, a big whale, but they had a, a 170, 150, you know, somewhere in that broad range, maybe close to 200. Uh, and a few players that put up a fight when the map opened. When the map opened, uh, blew up a handful of bases. Uh, the fight was over in about an hour. And for the eight days that we've been in Cairo, there has been zero fighting. So I deleted my battle reports, but I think total I have about 250 to 300 kills for an eight-day period. Contrast that to San Francisco or Moscow, where I would average 10,000 kills a day um, on a good day. Uh, we can go look at some favorite battle reports that I have. These are a couple just from... Uh, I think it was the last event that we fought in. And uh, so I've got a base defense report there of 3,800. We've got a, I think this one was a field battle report, 1,230. Well, actually, just that was aircraft. And then there's another one for 1,029. So that was all, you can see these two were actually on a single day. That's 5,000 kills. So to come to Cairo as a fighting alliance and for eight days have no fighting to actually do, it's a pretty big change. So my mind goes to what was Lila thinking? What was their mindset? There are some cool things about Cairo. We can run through them uh, briefly. Um, first off, in your, you start in your safe zone. You can't leave your safe zone because your safe zone is actually locked by a level one fort. So that's kind of cool. In a way, because in Moscow and San Francisco, you can't actually access forts till much later in the map. Um, but there's actually no point because even when you capture that fort and the map opens up and you can finally leave your safe zone, 
all it does is open up to the next level two fort. And when that, um, you still can't access your enemies until that opens up. And then finally, when the level two fort opens up, um, which I believe was almost like five days into the event or something like that, then finally you can access the enemy next to you. If you're lucky. The way it seems to be is Lilith has paired, at least as far as what I can tell, in most battlefields, they pair a strong alliance with the weaker alliance into a single coalition. So, for example, United Power and Boss from the same server are paired together, uh, 12.5 billion and 9 billion. And in other battlefields, I've seen pretty similar, but where it may be like 10 billion and 5 billion, or 8 billion and 2 billion. And so each coalition seems to have a strong and weak alliance. So let me know what your battlefield is like. I have not obviously looked at all of them, but that seems to be the case. Now, the cool thing about Cairo is with the coalition feature, you share all first capture rewards on a node, you share all buffs on a node, and I'm pretty sure you also share the repute per minute of a node. So why is that nice? Well, you don't have to argue over who gets what nodes in the level four event. So for the level one fort, United Power, we capture our level one fort, but both boss and United Power get that first capture reward, so the gold and the rush uh, rewards from that. I believe both alliances are getting the benefit of the troop damage resist 5% as well as the one repute per minute. And that actually is stated in the coalition features um, on the theater of conquest. So if we go look at that screen, um, apparently I, oh yeah, here we go about coalitions. Coalition is a union of alliances. A coalition allows you to coordinate with new allies, speed up development and offers the following benefits. Coalition assistance. Uh, so when you do tech research and stuff like that, you can assist members not just in your own alliance, but in your coalition, and that's pretty cool. Uh, coalition collection. Collecting resources within coalition territory increases your collection speed and will earn you contribution coins. So I can collect in boss territory as a United Power member and still have the same benefits I would as if I was farming my own land. And then finally, the whole point, coalition strategic places. So all members of coalition will earn First capture rewards and buffs when it captures strategic places. So first capture rewards, again, nobody has to argue over who takes what. And because both alliances or all the alliances in the coalition get the buff, everybody wins. So it doesn't matter who gets what if you're in the same coalition. Now, as a coalition, you can actually choose to dissolve that coalition so you can go into uh, coalition and I could, as the alliance leader, I could actually dissolve the coalition and we could actually fight against boss if we chose to do so. Um, you also can still have normal peace treaties with the other alliances on the map. So we actually had one with uh, uh, the mass alliance for a little while until we decided to do a 2v6 on the map to make it as fair as possible for everybody, but also the most fun as possible for everybody. I think when Lilith made Cairo, they had a very specific design intention in mind. I think that design intention, hate to say it, is the free to play player because there's not as much fighting. So you're not draining a lot of your resources. You can farm, you can grow. You can get repute, you can complete the missions, you can get refined components, you can access the hidden camps and purchase things that you would normally get from high levels of VIP that maybe you don't have access to. So it's kind of a farmer's paradise, basically, um, with, a with enough fighting where maybe it's casual. And so if you compare that to like Moscow or San Francisco, where Entry day, at least for like an R5 like myself, is very stressful because you know there's going to be war immediately and it's going to last all night into the morning. And if you're fighting active alliances, it's going to be nonstop and you're probably not going to sleep. It's going to disrupt your work schedule, your school schedule. Um, and it's very difficult, actually, um, especially to have a plan on entry and especially if you're getting stomped by a stronger alliance. Um, it, it's very different 
then coming to Cairo. And I think Lilith probably heard some of the complaints and the feedback from people and actually developed Cairo with that in mind. Because if you look at the cons of Moscow and San Francisco, where entry day is very stressful, server reset comes, you got to enter in there, you got to have a plan fast, your alliance has to mobilize, you're going to be fighting for hours and hours and hours nonstop. And it is disruptive to your work and sleep and school schedules. Um, and that lasts for 30 straight days of basically nonstop fighting if you have good alliances. And uh, the second issue with those maps is then diplomacy. The fact that people argue and fight over node capture. Who's going to get first capture rewards? Who's going to get more repute per minute? Who's going to get what buff? Um, and you can go into a map and have great diplomacy and have that diplomacy all fall apart simply because of greed or a dispute over a node. And frankly, I think they've taken a lot of the things that free-to-play players or R5 or R4 might have complained about, and I think they've taken all that feedback and rolled it into what became Cairo. That's my opinion. But when you look at how Cairo is designed... You look at how they've laid out the buildings, what the buildings do, um, the fact that there's not as much fighting, the fact that they've paired strong alliances and weak alliances together into coalitions. It just all kind of, to me, all kind of, seems to kind of add up. Now, one other major problem with Cairo, though, is basically how the map actually is designed in terms of the roads and villages. And what do I mean by that? Well... Our side of the map is probably the worst. So we're in the upper left-hand corner, and you can see we've built out to all of our buildings and captured all of our nodes. We've got our enemy pinned into the safe zone because um, that's the only area we can actually even access our enemy. Um, that fight when we entered Cairo was over in about 30 minutes, and that was it. That's all the fight that they put up. But it was a 12.5 billion alliance versus basically like a, a 5 billion alliance of mostly alt accounts. So the big problem though, is let's go down here to the level three fort. Okay. So we build through the fort, da 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 da. We're gonna follow this build plan all the way to the blockhouse. And you should spot the problem right away. There's the blocked off zone. There's only one road into the blockhouse. Why is that a problem? Well, this is the only build path that both United Power and Boss can access a blockhouse at. There's only one blockhouse for the coalition. So, one of these alliances probably going to be ours. We will build all the way there and we'll be the ones to build through the blockhouse. Um, boss will probably have to wait four days until the second com uh, central command is unlocked. And then finally they can build past the blockhouse. And then it happens again at the level two blockhouse. There's only one road into the blockhouse. So you can't build both coalition territories side by side on this side of the map. Now on the other side of the map, over here, if we look at the blockhouse on the east side of the map, look at that, there are two roads. So there's the road here, and then there's the main road from the blockhouse. Actually three roads, they've got the road, so they've got three entry points into the blockhouse. So that's pretty interesting in of itself that the map is not symmetrical. And I bet their level two blockhouse is the same. I'll bet they have multiple road. Nope. So, okay. So their level two blockhouse, they do only have one road into that particular blockhouse. So why Lilith designed Cairo to have such a disparity in the symmetry of the map because frankly 
to be a competitive map, you need to have some symmetry so that way all the alliances can fight by their own merit. Now, unless the way Lilith does the matchmaking, they've placed the strongest alliances, like in our case, in the areas on the map that are at a disadvantage versus the weaker alliances maybe are in a spot on the map that is at an advantage. So that could be the case. So different ways to think about the Cairo map, that it's not all evil at the end of the day, but the number one thing that is evil at the end of the day is just the large amount of farming and lack of fighting. Um, frankly, we had probably like 10, 12, I don't know, we had a god ungodly number of army groups. Everyone was excited to enter Cairo for the first time. Um, but after that first fight was over, now we've been farming for eight days, you pretty much won't see an army group. People completed most of their missions already. And that just is how it is. So it's just different than what everyone is used to. Um, the other thing I guess I could say too is with the missions, the normal level four missions, they did add some additional tiers. So you have the normal 400 million farm farming of resources, you've got the killing of reserves, and actually, okay, I've got 906 kills. Big deal. Eight days. So, to get 25 kills, and the rewards seem pretty nice, like, you know, three refined components, 10 gold officer statues. Go all the way down. I completed all my repute because I took first place in one of the conquer events by using coupons. Um, but there is the 10K, 15K, 20K, 25K, 30K, 40K, which was the max in Moscow and San Francisco, but there also is 50K and 60K. So back to my point, um, they're giving refined components and statues. You're gonna complete this repute probably before you even get to a blockhouse so again, I think they made Cairo for free-to-play players, actually. Casual players that are not playing six to eight hours a day. They're not fighting a ton. Maybe they log on a few times. They put their trucks out. They complete some the, you know, daily missions. Uh, maybe they do a little bit of fighting. I, I think they made Cairo for the free-to-play players. Um, not necessarily farm players. I mean, you, maybe... They made it for them because everyone has to have some kind of everyone's got their thing right ideally you'd want a 100 percent fighting alliance and warpath but that's not the case you need the farmers because those farmers they they're good at hitting the bunker they're good at using energy they're good at micromanaging resources maybe they just don't fight but they do provide repute and so that still pumps up your repute rating so if we go look at ours, of course, we're number one because we're the biggest alliance in the battlefield. And then, of course, boss being the second biggest alliance in the battlefield is naturally number two. Um, so you still have that. You also have coalition repute, which I believe, again, that one repute per minute on the nodes. I don't know if that only goes to the alliance that owns the node. I would like to think it's shared because it's technically like a buff. Um, so I don't know where the, I mean, maybe there's a, let's read it. So coalition repute. So there we go, actually. So there's the first capture repute for the coalition. So the first time an alliance in a coalition captures a strategic place, the coalition will earn a massive amount of repute. So before these were alliance specific. So if like United Power took a settlement or a town, we would get that repute, but another alliance would not. So let's see what Alliance Repute says. So same thing. So actually, it seems like the Alliance and the Coalition have separate repute. But it doesn't matter because, again, because you're in that Coalition, you're going to get that first capture anyway. So... There's no arguing. So if even even for the center pyramid, 200,000 repute, it doesn't matter who captures that first because as long as you're in that same coalition, both boss and up are going to get that 200,000 repute from that first capture, plus the first capture rewards, plus the repute per minute. So it literally doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is who's going to walk, walk away 
with that R5 metal, right? So that's probably gonna be this guy, awarded to the leader of the Alliance that controls the Great Pyramid at the end of the Cairo Conquest. So like, I would like to get that. Um, I have a Moscow medal, I do not have I don't believe I have a San Francisco medal because San Francisco just sucks. Nobody likes that. So anyway, Cairo is interesting, but my theory is that it is made for the free to play farm players, casual players to give them a level four gameplay experience. Whereas I think the fighting alliances will give Cairo a try, but I think fighting alliances will likely skip Cairo and stick with Moscow or San Francisco until they come out with a new level four that's oriented back towards fighting. So drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. I'd be very interested in having some discussions about Cairo and the game mechanics and the design of the map. But guys, thank you for watching and we will see you next time.